And welcome to a very special episode of Blockbuster Wives. Blockbuster Wives. We have with us the um, the best person who could possibly join us for this rendition of Cody Cook Timber, the Cody Cook, ladies and germs. Here he is. Hello, everybody. Here I am. We did He's it. Here. Woo! So we thought we'd go over how we know Cody um, and just go over all the movies that we covered in Cody Cook Timber and kind of get his view on it. Because y'all know our views on it. We all we talk about it during our episodes. But we want to get his insight to why they're so important to him and how they shaped the person that we all know and love very much. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited. So, Cody, how do you know us? Let's talk about that first and foremost. Well, I believe we met in the sixth grade, correct? We did. Sixth yes. grade? Yep. Middle yep. school. Good times. Probably banned, right? I think so. Probably banned yeah. or like a class. Yeah, I agree. I can't I think, think you of any two classes were in I the have. same. I was say, I think you two were in the same band class, but I don't know that I was in it. I don't know. Sixth grade band is such a blur, I'll be honest. Sixth grade is I kind know. of a blur. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Yeah. Way too much going on. TBH. But, Seventh uh, grade was kind of a blur for me. I got contacts and it did not go well. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Literally a blur? Yeah. Um, incredible. Yeah, no. Seventh grade, well, all of middle school was kind of a blur up until like the last half of seventh grade, which is when we became best friends, Stacy. But like the beginning of like the first half of middle school, I don't remember much, honestly. I think that's how it is for everybody probably because it's so terrifying. And then like once you find your stride and you make your group of friends, like then you fall into your comfort zone and it's not so scary. True dad. I was going to say, some people report hating middle school. Were you a middle school hater? Did you like it at the time? Do you look back fondly? I loved it. I loved middle school and high school. College was the iffy one. I was like, man, this is not (laughs) as fun as eighth grade. (laughs) I feel the same. I feel like it's so rare to enjoy both of those experiences. And most people are super haters about it, which is understandable. But, like, I don't know. I look back fondly. Not that I'm like, I wish I could go back. But, like, I am glad about the experiences that I had, you know, at that time. Which is really rare. Absolutely agree. Look at us all being on the same page. Great teachers. Great friends. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel like we do have to address how Shay and Cody got even closer by being cutie pie little middle school girlfriend boyfriend. Yeah, that's right. That was that was dope. I love telling people that you were my first boyfriend, Cody, because I'm like, he was a mix between Weird Al Yankovic and Chris Farley and Jack Black somehow had a baby. (laughs) And like, that's so I love telling people how cool you are. Obviously, we have a whole month dedicated to it. Um, (laughs) But yeah, no, we we were so lucky, I think that we had that experience together. And like, who can say that they're still friends with their like middle school boyfriend, you know, that's not a that's thing. True. I We're didn't very even lucky. <laughs> I know. Look how lucky I am that I did have one. And it was you, <laughs> honestly. Uh, but no, Thank yeah, we went to much. the eighth grade dance together. So and we romantic. had the same friends. Like we killed it. We killed it in these streets. Yeah, it was a great time. It was. And I'd do it all again now. if I could. Me too, dog. Me too. And and incredible trumpet player. Might I say? Mm, yes. Mm-hmm. Like, Thank very, you. very good. Yes, of course. And drummer and singer, which we'll get into later. But yes, um, please see his album, Something Special, available on all major music platforms. Oh, Ding. yeah. So good. I was just listening to it the other day, too. Um, and don't forget, 
if you want a sticker like this, you have to become a Patreon member for Blockbuster Watch. Yeah, Cody's got a sick sticker, <laughs> but you gotta be paying at the five dollar level, and it's got it takes like a few months, all right. So yeah, just it takes a little while, you know. You don't just get it like that. You have to build up to this whole experience of life. Um, it's not a get sticker rich quick scheme, all right. No, no we're not a, yeah, no. yeah, we're not a pyramid up in here. We are a duo. <laughs> okay, that we were ground level. We're working it from the ground level, but. Um, yeah, no, I feel very lucky to know you, Cody. We're both very lucky to have known you this long. And the fact that you're so supportive of us and we could still call you a friend is incredible. So thank you so much. Um, well, thank yeah. you. You guys support me. Did you hear that whole intro? It was incredible. <laughs> well, we have to. How so, could we not? You're I'm so just honored dope. to be here. Well, listen. And oh my gosh, I have my own month. How did the van fundraiser go for your band, by the way? Yeah. We got a van, so <gasps> it went. Oh, hell yeah. Good. And the band is so Dr. Smoke. Now we can go. Mm. Yep, and the band Dr. is Dr. Smoke. Smoke. For anyone who doesn't know. Do you guys have any um, of your holiday special plans going on or not this year? It was very last minute last year, and I felt, like, burnt out creatively. Yeah, I could I, see we that. grinded so hard for a month before. Yeah. And like, I didn't even write any of my own music until like March. I was just oh, done with creative wow. things. <laughs> so we're not doing it this year, but we are doing two cover songs and we're working on new music for the third album. Oh, yay. Very okay. Nice. So yeah, you guys but have no to check out Dr. Like, Smoke. Not a last minute, 30 minute video this year. <laughs> as fun as it was last year. It's still up that though, CD right? compilation. Yeah. Okay. My my favorite from last year's was the CD compilation commercial. Obsessed. <laughs> it's Absolutely. Beyond. I when you told me you had a special, I was like, oh, this is gonna be cool. Like, of course it's gonna be cool. I'm gonna check it out. It blew my fucking mind. Like it actually I was the amount of work and creativity and like costuming and makeup, like everything that went into it was so spectacular. It's still on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. or, okay. Yeah, both of them. 2021 okay. and 2022. Yeah, you guys, everyone needs to look that up. It is the, it's one of my favorite projects of all time. Truly, it's so good. And there's something for everybody. Yeah, the Dr. Smoke Halloween special. And then you'll find one for last year and the year before. And they're Ugh. very different vibes from each other. Yeah, it was but like they a both learning still... experience. And then now we can do what we wanted. Yeah. Like, that's the difference between the two years. But it Very has, like, nice. the same energy, you know? The same soul. You can tell it's, yes. like... The same it's smokage. Exactly. The same That's level right. of doctor smokage, baby. Um, okay, well, listen. I think we should just step right into talking about the four movies that you chose for Cody Cooktember. Which, by the way, mm -hmm. everyone is stoked about. Like, we met someone recently who is a fan, and he mentioned your name, and I was like... This is so fucking crazy. Like, it's not like yeah. a family member, like an immediate family member or someone <laughs> we went to school with. It was like, oh, like, oh, Cody Cook. Like, I wonder who this guy is because all the movies he chose are like, duh, duh, duh. and I was like, I can't believe you're saying Cody Cook to me right now. That's nuts. So we, <laughs> we have to give the people what they want. You know, I'm That's glad really that we're funny. diving yeah, into them. On the last episode, I think you said is when you met somebody at a party and they like said it to you and you're like, mm -hmm. whoa, this is real. Yeah, I was like, Jesus Christ. I still Christ. can't believe it's real. Yeah, it's crazy. But we're so lucky. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you chose a really good lineup. Like a really, really good lineup. Very um, nostalgic and super, super dope. So let's go over the first one. Why am I forgetting which one it is? What was our first one? Holes. It when I went most, on a rant. the most forgettable one. Oh, now, Holes. It was Brink. Oh my God, I get a mixed Brink. up. We did Brink before Holes. Br See, oh yeah, how that's could why it, you that's... forgot. It's the most forgettable one. <laughs> okay, Just Cody, I have to ask. Yeah, did my did my opinions? Uh, did <laughs> I hope I wasn't too hurtful. <laughs> no, not at all. Okay, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, especially about rollerblading movies. <laughs> that's what I everyone. Said. Everyone, everyone had motto. very strong. Yeah, everyone had very strong opinions on Stacy's opinion. 
um, which I thought was mm-hmm. so funny. It's so polarizing, which you wouldn't think it would be that hardcore, but I guess like nostalgia oh, is so powerful. So. I didn't think that anyone would be going so hard on either side of the spectrum, you know? So it was kind of, it was funny. Um, but why did you, why did you choose Brink? Let's start there. Why was that like, you're like, okay, this is the number one movie I'm choosing first and foremost. Well, I went in order, like chronologically. I thought that for the four that I picked, 98 to 2009 was a decent span. And there was like a few years gap. And then, you know, now I'm not in fifth grade anymore. Now I'm in (laughs) eighth grade and now I'm in a senior in high school. So I thought like that was a good span for the total selection. And starting in 98, what I don't know if you guys were seven, but I was seven years old. I was seven. We were both seven. Yeah. I was as well. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know. That's my favorite decom for sure. It's definitely in. I, I think most people's like top five. For sure. Oh. Yeah, that and Halloween Town, <laughs> which I'm very excited Stacey! for. <laughs> Contrarian up in <laughs> What's your bitch? favorite, Stacy? Okay, so I'm like in order. No, my favorite <laughs> decom is a, probably a tie between Under Wraps and Smart House. I think I give Smart House the edge. I'm obsessed with it. But Under Wraps, mm-hmm. it was actually the first decom, and I think it's just so good. Yeah, first one. It's been a long time since I've seen it. It's a perfect think... month to watch it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And what was Can of Worms? That was like the second one, right? That, no, it's I such a random one. Further. Really? That one is very strange. I think it, that no, might I, have I been just the first one I this. saw. It was like Under Wraps, Brink, You Lucky Dog, um, Halloween Town was only the fourth. Maybe Can of Worms wasn't there. Yeah, I think Quince was an early one with the quintuplets. Yeah, that one came right after Halloween Town, right? Because it starred Kimberly mm, Brown so. as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one was pretty early on. Well, so, so I Cody, think I chose did Brink you... because, mm. like, I was into rollerblading as a kid. I used to rollerblade in my grandpa's cul-de-sac. And then after the movie came out, I started going to the skate park with my dad. And rollerblades Aww. was the first, like, vehicle I learned to drop in. That's wow. so cute. Oh, so speaking I had, of like, your dad. A connection to rollerblades. Yeah, what's up? What? Sorry. There's this weird... Okay, remember this? You know what I'm going to bring up, don't you? Robin Williams? No. Okay. A, like a handful... No. Like Maybe like a handful or like 10 years ago or something, like Cody and I were randomly talking on the phone and I was like, oh, I remember your dad and all like his like million converse. And he was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, your dad, he has like every color converse like ever. And he was like, oh, he- doesn't and i swear i have this set it must have been a dream but i would have bet money that your dad had every single color of the rainbow converse and for some reason like why (laughs) i don't know but every time i think of your dad i think of that and now i have to rewrite the history in my mind like that isn't a thing he didn't have every pair of converse anyway and isn't that well, you're scary rewriting because... the history in your mind, and I'm rewriting it that he did have them. Because yeah, think you're like you would cool. be way cool if he did. Yeah, <laughs> but were you gonna say our Susan? memory is? So... I was just gonna say our memory is so fickle. It's kind of wild that we could just like very strongly believe that certain things happened, and it's like no. <laughs> that yeah, he shattered happen. my world when he said no. That's not. A th-. I was like, what do you mean? Like. <laughs> You must not remember like I do. And he's just like, what the fuck are you talking about? That's not a thing. But, oh, man, you, you crushed my dreams with with that, with you laying down the facts like that. <laughs> That's funny. But, no, Brink is a great choice. Um, very nostalgic. The music, too. Because you are you were a big fan of ska, right? I mean, you probably still are. Yeah, but... I was a big fan at, like, the, the end of middle school. Yeah, because Becca's brother Jason got me into it, and Adam Dunson. So we like we were little ska boys in eighth grade. That but was I really like the music in Brink. Yeah, I think me the too. music in Brink and the fashion really encapsulates that time period for us. Like the late nineties, early two thousands is how we dressed in middle school. Was this movie? Hmm. Oh yeah, hardcore. We talked about that too, Stacy. Right. 
Yeah, and just how greasy their hair was cracked me up, particularly Eric Von Dutton. I was like, it is like a pound of grease in that hair, just combed right back. In every movie, in every movie, he is a grease ball, and it didn't matter at all. In fact, it made him cooler somehow. I don't know how, but love that guy. And then everybody's hairstyle was starting to go that way, too. Like, yeah. with the kids in middle school, we all had that hairstyle. Oh, my God. We Except we had out, the like, swoop. It's time to stop getting haircuts. That's what we want to look like. <laughs> Cody no had haircuts, giant ton, hair. Tons of product. Tons of product. Yeah. Just the more, the better. Gel, mousse, grease, whatever you had. Yep. 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 Yeah, Cody had, like, very luxurious hair. Like, super blonde, super swoopy. <laughs> Good had, times. Like, flipped out on the sides. Yeah. Like everyone oh, did. yeah, baby. Yeah, it was, like, very fluffy. Yep. It was dope. And now you have the beard, which is sick. I know. And it fits your entire personality. <laughs> so hardcore. No more swoop, though. No swoop no. with the beard. A swoop with the beard would be a little um villain e you know i don't yeah. know if that fits your vibe i don't want i don't want to throw it in people's faces yeah yeah you don't want to like threaten but the very beard modest of you. going either way yeah it was, yeah <laughs> very nice of you honestly very non-threatening okay so after brink we have not well, hold on, Shay. do you have any other oh. notes on brink because you had some stuff prepared want to make sure that you talk about what you want to talk about um i didn't well, talk i think i, I did all the Go ahead, dog. I think Please. I covered everything of like why I picked it, but I did want to do my favorite moments from the movie. Yes. Okay, go ahead. So I have like a couple of favorite moments from each movie. My favorite in this one is when they're doing the race at school and Boomer falls and he stops and everybody's <laughs> like, what are you doing? We don't get it. <laughs> so I think like that, it really shows you Brink's character. Yeah. And then the the best part of the movie though is the milkshake throw. And like you guys said, oh, we'll get it on for sure. Seems <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like it was the... sexual. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, the villain mm-hmm. is like horny the whole time. Cody, yeah, he I am absolutely surprised. Is. I am surprised that Nunya Nunya business didn't make it because that <laughs> sh- that struck me right in my heart when I rewatched it. I was like, I cannot. Nunya business. I cannot so sad none your business and then the- you were talking about the music in that scene yeah depressing as fuck i was like what am i watching why is this so sad <laughs> it was very like um novella like it was very very dramatic for like the moment that they were trying to oh, show yeah. us you know very i'm like what are you what are you fucking doing dog but it was very funny i mean yeah once you brought that back up stacy i was like oh my god i didn't even like realize how dumb and funny that was <laughs> no and right after that it plays the intro song for the eighth time in a row yeah, yeah. baby <laughs> yeah soul skaters baby They'll squeeze that in everywhere they can so like, listen, still... we paid a lot of money for this song we're gonna play it straight That's up right. and and then the song that i i can't find anywhere and someone did the cover of on youtube the one that's playing when they're <laughs> um you know what i'm talking about right yeah, I checked that out and somebody covered it on YouTube. Yeah, and I can't like, believe that. Oh, sorry. I was just saying they were like, knows we're looking where for the a original vocalist. song is. I know. It's somewhere like, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's so odd because it's really cool. It's a really cool song. I'm very surprised they didn't release it, but it's neither here nor there. Um, I, I hope yeah. that that person on YouTube gets a vocalist because I could see that going really well for everybody in this very niche community that's looking for that specific fucking song. Um, but anyway. Okay. Any other notes before we move on to Nacho Libre? Now let's get into holes. Let's get into holes first before Nacho yeah. Libre. <laughs> Perfect. I'm, I'm really forgetting the order. Okay, so holes. Holes means a lot to Stacy and I. We were so glad that you chose it because it was it's been on our list since the beginning. And so we were we were trying to find a moment where it would be perfect. And then you put it on your list and we're like, boom, that's nailed it. OK, so why did holes mean so much to you? The holes, I think it, I picked that and why it meant so much to me growing up was like almost strictly because of Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, because <laughs> he's from Even Stevens and then my sense of humor and like his wackiness. 
I just modeled how I wanted to be funny after how I thought he was funny. So that like, makes that's a lot of sense. Number one. Oh yeah, that yeah, makes you sense. All the extra stuff, that extra stuff that Stacy found, like how tightly written it is about the justice system, and it's like so. It seems like it should be obvious, but I think it's just so good that that's not immediately apparent until you're an adult. You know? What yeah. I mean? Yeah, very true. Very true. And, and did you read yeah, the book? And I will say, oh, sorry. Yeah, I think I, I don't know if I read the book or not. I'm not sure if I read it in school, but I know my mom taught it. So we definitely had the book. I imagine I did read it. And then probably two or three years later, it came out as a movie. Yeah. But that's like when I really latched onto it. Oh, yeah, me too. But were you going to ask Stacey? Oh, I just wanted to update everybody that unfortunately I did not get a response from Louis Satcher, Sakar, however you say his name. So I still don't know how he was able to nail it like he did. I, I, like I said on the episode, I know he went to law school, but I just can't help thinking he must have known somebody who was in like juvenile justice or something because he just he, he got it so right. Yeah, yeah, he must have. I mean, based on every like all the notes that you were giving at the beginning of our episode blew me away. Truly. I mean, how much he had to have known, you know, like he had mm-hmm. to have an eye in there somewhere. I don't know how, but he or it was working brilliant. on the movie. I don't know. Yeah. Like maybe they had a consultant, but it's pretty accurate to the book. Like the nicknames yeah. thing. And like, yeah, just the deprivation of being incarcerated. Like that's all in the book. So just pretty amazing. Yeah, he killed it. Yeah, some of that stuff goes over your head when you're a kid, and then when you grow up, it ends up being, like, the best part of the movie. Yeah, it's almost like it, it became better as we became adults, which is opposite from a lot of our viewing experiences. Uh, Brink. Like, with Brink. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. It, it's, you love it more, as you watch it, you love it more and more and more, and you find different things that you didn't see before, different connections mm-hmm. that you didn't make when you were a kid, you know, that went right over your head, different jokes and things like that, just... Yeah, they. Th- it's definitely mm-hmm. top of all of our lists, I would say, for good reason. Yeah. All right. Did you write any favorite parts in your little notes? I do. I do have some favorite parts. The absolute favorite part is, I'm tired of digging, Grandpa. <laughs> I'm tired of digging, Grandpa. Oh, that's too damn bad. <laughs> right? So, I think um, I'm... fun I say fun story. I went to a podcasting expo where like people were networking in the local Las Vegas community. And I told somebody that we recently did an episode on holes I really liked. And she immediately went, I'm tired of digging, Grandpa. Well, that's too damn bad. Like, she just <laughs> knew immediately. And I was like, it's such an iconic line. Like, everyone knows it. Everyone loves it. It is. And it's become I a love. meme the last couple of years, which is fantastic. Uh, and it, it really <laughs> works so. for so many things. Exactly. It works for so many scenarios. It's so perfect. But what were you going to say? Then one of my one of my other favorite parts is when he steals Mister Sir's truck and he lets out a classic Shia LaBeouf like scream or woohoo before he crashes it. I was like, yes, pinnacle Shia LaBeouf. His scream to me is as iconic as Adam Sandler's. Like I feel like mm-hmm. they both have great screamer voices, which normally I wouldn't ever say about anybody because that's like a lot. <laughs> but for them, their screams are just like. Well, I just want to hear them. Yeah, chef's kiss. The all right. I'm like, yes. <laughs> I just love them. I love them so much. Shia LaBeouf has some iconic screams in Even Stevens. I rewatched it over COVID. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yep. I the still whole series. I think so. There's only three seasons. Yeah, three seasons. Oh, really? What? Yeah. Wow. There's only three seasons wow. of that and of Lizzie McGuire. So maybe it's like a Disney wow. thing. Wow. And I think of huh. um, that's a raven. I think that just shows you like how slowly time moves when you're a kid. Like it feels like forever, but it wasn't. And now it's like yeah. we can blink and miss three seasons of a show, and we're like, oh, <laughs> it's October. Totally, <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah. Or you yeah. don't even find out about a show until it's on its third season. Hmm. Exactly. I usually I'm not. And then you usually... watch it in two days. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not usually the type that, like, jumps on right away. I kind of enjoy waiting until it's over and they're on to, like, the second or third season so that I can binge in, like, two days. 
multiple seasons. Mm-hmm. That's kind of my thing. But, you know, there's too many shows. There's too much media, man. It's There's too much to keep up yeah. with. <clears throat> I think there's only three seasons, but we probably watched it for like six years. Yeah, you know rerun. I mean? Just rerun it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it was definitely, that and Lizzie McGuire and That's a Raven were definitely my top fave shows. And Boy Meets World, of course, but um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Classics. I want to go through all those again. I haven't watched them in a while. Um, Okay, next, Nacho Libre. Nacho Libre, baby. Jack Black. Didn't surprise me at all that you chose that, by the way. I was waiting for that one, truly. Well, I, I would have so chosen glad. School of Rock, but you guys already did it. But that was kind Can't of like the preview. It, it was the preview to Co- 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 Cody Cook Timber, though, because you did do a little bit. another theme song. You did our trivia and you killed it, by the way. That was so cool. Um, <laughs> I know you. we didn't show anyone, but like he did a whole. What was it? Like a, it was like like a slideshow slide? type yeah, slideshow quiz or something. It was so dope. You you killed that. So that was a good preview to Cody Cook Timber for everybody. So, um, but yeah, you know, I hadn't watched Nacho Libre all the way through until this viewing. I know. I was surprised. Yeah, me too. I, and actually. you liked it. So mission like accomplished. It. And My I knew work I here would. Is done. I knew I would. I was waiting for the right time. This was the perfect time to start. Um but what does that movie mean to you besides the obvious we are obsessed with Jack Black? Uh, Jack Black, obviously. It's my second favorite Jack Black movie behind a school of rock above Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny. So that's like <laughs> the trifecta of Jack Black movies for me. Mm-hmm. And then when you said in the podcast it came out June of 2006, I remembered that I had seen it in theaters with Chris Jackson. and. Oh. The next month is when I moved to Ohio. Oh, wow. oh my god! So I think like when that came out on DVD, it was it had only been like three or four months, but I instantly had this nostalgia mm, of like for Vegas. Home, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, that's so nice. You know, I was on a that's softball really team with Chris Jackson this year. Love that guy. Yeah, yeah we, I the- think I'm going to his wedding. Oh. I love that. See, we're so good at keeping up with each other, you guys. That is so rare. We need to pat ourselves on the back, honestly. That's so cool. We're so lucky. Um, Okay, but name some of your... I want to hear some of your favorite moments from this movie because I've been trying to think about what some of them would be. But I want to... I'm excited. My two favorite moments, hands down, are the two music scenes. So when he's (laughs) he's singing at the party, it's Um, like... Yes. That's my favorite. And also when he sings the Encarnacion song, <laughs> like before the big wrestle, and he's got the trumpet. <laughs> I was like, that's perfect. Yeah, that's one million, perfect. that is fully you, 1000%. That's so funny. But one of, one of my favorite pieces of dialogue is when he's talking to all the orphans. He's like, you know, I get to lay in a bed by myself all of my life. It's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Make some soup. <laughs> it's the best. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. Go away. Read some books. <laughs> <laughs> he is so perfect in everything he ever does. He just embodies whatever role he's playing more than anyone I've ever seen. Absolutely. That's that. That's that on that. All right. Well, <laughs> we we all agree. That's good. And yeah, then, nobody does it like Jack Black. Nobody. Nobody but, does. Oh, and it's Only because monsters. of Cody. Exactly. It's because of Cody I have an autograph from Jack Black. Because without you telling wow. me about like that, um yeah, he was doing this like uh if you, what was it again? If you donate to this charity, then he's mm-hmm. sending out autographs of pictures of him in a speedo jumping into a pool. Which obviously yeah, interested what the charity me. I forget what the charity was for, but I think it was like the skateboard foundation or something like that. I the Tony the name Hawk. Of it. That's why he's doing a kickflip. Yes. It, it might like be Tony like Hawk through Tony Hawk. I think it was. I know steve done it too and a couple other people. Mm. But once yes. I saw that on Instagram, I was like, click the link, buy this right now. $50. That's fair. Mm-hmm. 
I would have spent a hundred. <laughs> yeah, and then you immediately were like, "Shit, you need to check this out." And I posted <laughs> it on my story because at the time that was like COVID, right? So I was like, "Yeah, I can't, I can't afford this." And then one of my mm. friends got it for me for Christmas. So, so it was very which sweet. is beautiful. Yeah, it made me cry. How many genuinely. times have you seen this movie, Stacy? <laughs> so I had probably seen it three times I would say I think I may have seen in theaters and then I watched it a couple times with my sister Steph because her and her family are obsessed with it and then it was mm-hmm. on the forefront of my mind because our guest Eduardo like always talks about it and when he heard we had a movie podcast he's like you gotta do Nacho Libre you gotta do Nacho Libre so it was coming up I was like <laughs> we gotta ask him if he'll be a guest <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah he was a good guest he was I'm looking forward yeah. to whenever he starts his podcast He'll have a lot to say. Yeah, he's that was a really, Roman really history on the brain every day kind of guy. So, you know, he wants to do a history podcast. Well, he Roman Empire. The first episode, cover Nacho Libre and then go to the Roman <laughs> Empire. <laughs> work, his, work his way backwards. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right. No, that's, yeah. Nacho Libre is his Roman Empire. And then he'll go into the actual Roman Empire. Right. Oh, his face, too, at the end. That face when he's in the bus. Looking back, yep. so that cracks cute. me up every time. The fact that he can do anything with his face is just <laughs> mind blowing to me. He's just amazing. I'm obsessed with him. I love him so much. He's so cool. Um, and did you know, of, or did you clock that about the little version of him being the same little version of him in Pick of Destiny? Yeah, of course oh, yeah. you knew that. Of course you do. That's not facts to you. What am I talking about? (laughs) All right, moving on. I love you, man. I was so surprised to see that this was on your list for some reason. I don't know why, but I was very pleasantly surprised because it's one of my faves that I don't, I don't know. I guess I like when people are like, what are your favorite movies? It's never one I bring up, but it's one I've watched so many times. So I was very happy to see it on your list. Um, And yeah, I want to know like, why that movie meant so much to you well that was one that i used to watch with my friends in high school like along with anchorman and talladega nights and all that stuff this is one that we like really got into and watched probably 15 times when we were seniors in high school and freshmen in college yeah i think the the main reason why it means so much to me is because i felt that way when i moved yeah like even though that was later when i was a senior this came out when i was a sophomore is when i moved so watching this i was like i know exactly what this feels like (laughs) even though i'm not getting married as a 17 year old (laughs) you know i mean the stakes felt the same like Mm. uh, i'm gonna move and have to find friends and of course it was fine like two months into my sophomore year i found my three best friends but like that feeling felt like the heaviest feeling I had ever felt. <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine. No, that's that's what, especially being, you know, not that you were old, but being like a fully formed teenager, moving to a completely different state. And like, you know, this is the time when most people are like solidifying their friends that they'll have forever. And you were like, great, now I have to fucking find a new crew. Like that must have been so hard. Yeah, it was tough. But I mean, it was really easy and I should not have been worried at all. <laughs> I was going to say, you are, you are you, you know what I mean? Like, it, I can't imagine it being hard for you to find people that you relate to and who think you're cool, obviously. Of course, it was easy for you because you're so likable and you have so many interests, you know, like, I, I can't imagine it would have actually been difficult for you in practice to find people that you related to and you could be friends with, you know. The way I look back on it, too, and the way that my best friends describe it to me back then and they're like my main best friend from high school I'm still really good friends with so the way I've heard him describe it before is like we weren't the way we were before you came and then like when you came to high school like you made us all like you like, hell yeah sense of virus humor is I was like you're a cult like, leader yeah it was like a virus <laughs> every day for them was they're Cody like, Cook Timber okay i was like watch brink (laughs) you little bitch you better watch i have a list (laughs) you better take notes that's amazing cody did you Um, do the thing where you're like back in vegas um Mm. i watched this movie or like back in vegas i did this yeah 
I didn't do that, but um, I don't know if you guys know I this or not. <laughs> what? I think I talked about it a lot and they like everybody knew I was from Las Vegas, but my nickname in high school was Vegas. <gasps> what? Mm, makes sense. That's from, cool. From like everybody in the school that knew do, me. Do people from Vegas? 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 From like day four on through senior year. Do people still call you that? Um, there's one person I see very rarely, like whenever I run into them in public, they'll say Vegas. And now it catches me off guard because it's been 10 years. But That's so fun. I'm trying to think of like nicknames that I got when I was in high school. I guess the main the one Canadian? was like, I think Panga. even teachers called me that. Wow. Yeah. Really? Damn. It was like uh, 100% my name. That's which is wild. Why I didn't mind it. That's so I like, weird. Cool, I get a nickname. That is, yeah, that is cool. Like, you know, you're like, it makes me different and cool. I'm like foreign. I'm from Vegas. Did people ask you, like, I felt like that? Yeah, I probably did. People ask you, like, oh, did you grow up in a casino? Like, all those typical questions we all get when we tell people. Yeah. And you're like, no. I'm like, yes. Behind a grocery store. It was crazy. (laughs) Crazy. Exactly. I was in elementary school, man. We partied so hard. Mm-hmm. In third grade when I lived oh. there. At the in and out for tires. Mm-hmm. Oh, in and out. That sounds so good. Oh, we yeah. should get that later. Yeah, we should. Um I'm but, jealous. Aw. Uh, well, if you come here for that wedding, in and out all day. We got you. Absolutely. Cool. <laughs> all day. All day of the wedding. That. Last time I went to Vegas. <laughs> really? Smart you point. just tried it for like every meal? Well, we went to Texas, uh, last summer and i had it for two meals in a row and hell yeah i was like i can feel it mr krabs (laughs) (laughs) i can't make i don't make any spongebob references because i am not up on my spongebob lore i need to watch it more and i feel bad because my wife always brings it up and i'm like and i want to understand so bad and i never do (laughs) and i feel like an asshole every fucking time but Someday I will understand. One day you'll join the flock and you'll understand. I will. Hopefully. I want to rewatch it on Paramount, but I know there's like 17 seasons. And every time I see that, uh, it just feels so daunting. Yeah, Yeah, it's intimidating. Have you watched all the seasons, Stacey? No, I do think there is a severe quality drop off at a certain point. Mm. They like change the SpongeBob, they change the voice. It's uh, just a different direction. But those first like five seasons are pure gold. Uh, yeah, I need to go back and watch those for sure. Those are all the classics anyway. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's right. OG, OG fans understand. Okay, well, some of you, what are your some, what are some of your favorite moments in I Love You, Man? Oh, all the awkward, like, phrases <laughs> that he's trying to use, <laughs> which then I watched it today. And, like, all um, those awkward phrases, like, you got it, Jopin. Yeah. I'll yeah. see you. There, I will see you on another time. And he's like, that's he's very like, confusing. I don't know. the whole time. <laughs> no. It's cute at the end, though, when he's you like, hear Take him. Take it easy, city slacker. City slacker. <laughs> it's, it's really cute at the end, like during his wedding, though, when he they're just going back and forth and it's not awkward at all. And it's very cute. You're just like, oh, you feel so comfy cozy now. It's very sweet. It's not like a main point in the movie and it goes really fast. But I when I watched it today, I noticed after they go to the Rush concert, he's on the phone with him again in mm-hmm. front of his fiance and like real quick before the end of the call he's like take it easy magooch and then they yeah, hang up and i was like that one actually went well and like mm-hmm. it wasn't awkward so now you're real friends yeah Whoa. i feel like magooch is a nickname you would give out i feel like that's a word you would say that's a very cody cook coded word fun fact no? my sister right. when she learned to say the word school she said the word gooch at first <laughs> for like, yeah. That's barely even close. <laughs> That's so funny. She's like, oh, school? Gooch. gooch. I want to go yeah, to gooch. No. And everyone's like, please, for the love of God, don't ever say that. gooch yeah. all day. God damn it. Yep. <laughs> she got the last it's laugh. like a prison. <laughs> oh, also, no. all the slap it a bass. Slap it a mm. bass. How every accent sounded like a leprechaun. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. That, that movie, it's so good. I really do love that one. And I could, I, 
it's one of those ones I feel like I could watch it over and over again and I'll never get sick of it, you know, which is rare. Um, mm-hmm. But that and Holes have the same sort of appeal in that way to me. That one too has really good music. I love you, man. And yeah. like the way they bond over music in the movie is how I feel like I've made friends as an adult. So even like from that feeling of I'm never going to have friends again to how I still currently make friends is relevant to me. Yeah. <laughs> and we talked in the episode a little bit about, maybe you could offer some insight on this. We were talking about how, um, for men, maybe this movie helped them be a little bit more vulnerable with their friends. And I don't know if that had that effect on you, but we would love to know a man's perspective on that. Because for us, we're like, we've always been encouraged to be more vulnerable, vulnerable with our friends. But for a lot of men, I feel like this inspired them to have a closer relationship. So what do you think? I can see that. Yeah. I think it also just depends on what kind of person you are and how you interact with your friends. Like yeah. for you guys, you're so close and I strive to maintain that level of closeness with my friends. So it's mm-hmm. never been like very difficult Yeah, to be like sincerely somebody's friend and say, I love you or, and not feel awkward about it because both of you <laughs> mean it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We but do. I think for some like, <laughs> we really do. bro people, like the Chads probably had a hard time accepting it. Well, that's what, like, yeah, so for you, yeah, really, really. But for you, you never felt like you didn't want to say it. Like, do you feel like you always had that personality where you were like, no, I'm comfortable showing affection to my homies? Or do you think, um, this I think movie the older I got, you? it was easier. The older I got, it was easier. But there's that unfortunate stigma of like, I don't want to be gay when I'm in. Yeah. Like every guy thought that way, unfortunately, in high school. Totally. It's very cringy. Society, I'm telling you. Yeah, for the kids, it used to be totally acceptable just to call things you didn't like gay. I was one of them. Yeah, absolutely. We all did it. We all did it. We thought it was like funny. Yeah, and it wasn't until I gained a best friend who was gay who was just like, "Hey, um, when you say that, I know you don't mean it like gay people, but like maybe start thinking about how that would make me feel." And I was like, "Holy shit." I never thought about it like that. Like, truly, it hadn't even crossed my mm-hmm. mind until they brought it up. And I was like, oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. You're right. And I never said it again. Um, but yeah. Anyway, the things that we thought were acceptable, we've grown so much. I remember when I was in sixth grade that I got called out for saying it because we had just gotten out of like one of the periods. And I was like, man, so much homework. That's gay. And one of the teachers even was like, do not say that. <gasps> really? Like, nice. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the reason is so obvious now, but like as a kid, you're like, wait, what? You're like, why? You I didn't know like that. You're saying. Who got us starting to say that? Like in the pre internet day, why did we all just, was it a Vegas thing? Was it like, I don't, I truly don't know. Me neither. Now that I'm, I feel like MySpace was a big part of it, but when did MySpace start? Like eighth grade? Like, was that when we were yeah, all not in seventh sixth grade? grade. But it was rampant, at least at our school. It sure was. Yeah, I think it was definitely, like, nationwide. It wasn't just a Las Vegas thing. And it was not on your side. It was I was about to say that! I was about to make that exact check. It's beautiful. (laughs) Yeah, no. But we all, we're we're all grown now. We now know, as Stacey says, mashed potato brains. Real thing. So dumb. We all experience that. So stupid. So dumb. I love it every time you guys say that. (laughs) <laughs> it's so true it's so fucking true but anyway no you, you chose a delicious lineup truly every single one was perfect and i guess i didn't even clock the fact that it was in chronological order so that was also brilliant kudos to you cody thank you and you know the funny thing is when i was watching it uh i learned that the director of nacho libre is the director of napoleon dynamite or like the writer mm-hmm. and I, director i don't like napoleon dynamite but really? I love Nacho Libre. Yeah. That surprises me. That really I surprises me. Like mm. I've only seen Napoleon Dynamite maybe three times, so maybe it's time to give it another go. Yeah, I think one of the other movies I almost put on the list is Hot Rod with Andy uh, Samberg, and yeah. that also has a very similar vibe to. I still haven't seen that Napoleon Dynamite. Oh man! Oh my gosh, it's so funny. We got to do it. I know. I know. You always quote. You always quote that one to me, and um. 
what it, like superstar or something like that not superstar but what's the one with no him? i do quote superstar a lot i do love but, superstar, um, but pop, it's not that one pop, pop star. star is great yeah outside of our time period but i fucking love that movie yeah i need to see that yeah hardcore a lonely but, island yep so good such a moment honestly in our in pop culture and our youth so, Cody, mm-hmm. if you had to pick your favorite episode of ours doing your movies, what do you think was, like, maybe your favorite? Maybe, like, your most unexpected? The one where, like, you learn the most? Just you, your vibes on them. I definitely learned the most from Holes, from mm-hmm. the research that you did, Stacy, and, like, all of the correlations that you were pointing out. So that was Thank fun. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of people learned so much, myself included, from Stacy in that episode. She definitely educated the masses. And provided entertainment somehow. She just does it all, everybody. It's She amazes me every day. <laughs> I think my favorite one was Nacho Libre, just because that's my favorite on mm. the list. Mm-hmm. Nice. But the one I had the most fun with was Brink, just to learn <laughs> what you thought. And I also watched, I watched Brink, like, right, I think, before listening to that episode, because I knew it was coming out. So I was like, I got to watch this movie. So I had the mm. most fun, like really paying attention and like seeing what you guys were going to go into about it oh hell yeah and then it's just me being like this movie is bad did you did <laughs> you feel like it changed did you feel like it changed upon reviewing or were you like nah this movie rules <laughs> yeah it rules it does rule i i agree i really i really do love brink so much i know i'm outnumbered but listen <laughs> the person who we met at that party totally agreed with stacy p.s like completely was like, and I agree with her take on Brink. And I was like, you need to tell her. She will be so happy. Um, so she, you know, you're you're just telling it how some some of the people feel it, you know? You're saying what needs to be said. That's all I'm I gotta honest, say. About it. I agree with both of you too on how like the stakes could have been higher, but also the stakes probably felt really high for Brink because mm. of all the pressure he felt from his parents. So like I don't know. It goes both ways, but I still love it. I do, too. It's like, uh, I always talk about this, like, gas station taquitos. Are they good? Probably not, but they're, like, some of my favorite fucking (laughs) foods. I just love them. Similar to Brink. Like, will he get, will Eric Von Detten get an Academy Award for his performance in Brink? (laughs) Probably not, but I still love it. I would watch it, you know. I, I can watch it again and again and be entertained. So. Yeah. It all That's goes, my level yeah. of, like, I decide if something was worth watching if I was entertained. Not if it was, like, really good or really bad. Like, do I feel like that was a waste of time? And if the answer is no, then it doesn't matter if it was, like, a D-plus movie. You know what I mean? No, that's a good way to put it. That's that's kind of how I feel about it, too. For sure. Mm-hmm. Man. What nailed a month. it. Good what job. What a fabulous honestly, month. Thank you. Honestly. Thank you for being a Patreon subscriber. Thank you for being a Patreon subscriber since, like, basically when we launched it. You're That'd amazing. <laughs> it's just beautiful. Yeah, it's... Yeah, thank I you love for, your guys' podcast. Keep going. Yay, Thanks, we will. Get the sticker. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being silly gooses with us for the last 20 years. Um, and we hope yeah. that it'll continue and hopefully we'll have another... Cody Cooktember, some other year, you know? You'll just have to grab a couple more Here's of your 20 more years. Aww, 20 more cheers. years. 20 more years. I have years. my water. Boom. I have a phone. <laughs> what are your plans moving forward for, like, Tembers for people? Because Anna is a Patreon and now Eduardo, right? Yes. Yes. Thank you for shouting that out. Um, mm-hmm. So I believe for Anna, we're going to do April because that's when her birthday is. And... Um, I thought of, what did I say? Like April Leitner. April Leitner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, April Leitner. And then Eduardo, we haven't decided yet. We haven't talked about that one yet, but well, he's, he's very new. Well, prove that he's going to stick around, you know? He's got to <laughs> get right. that sticker first. He's got to pay his dues. That's, That's right. right. You you first and foremost, and Anna hopped on, so she definitely deserves her months, and she gets her flowers, just like you have. And uh, yeah, mm-hmm. Eduardo definitely has to prove himself for a little bit longer, but I have a feeling he'll stick around, you know? Same. We got real. We got real ones on our side, so we're not even. How are those Shrek Crocs treating you, uh, Stacy? 
Oh, I have a story about the Shrek Crocs, actually. Oh, so shit. my my work schedules this like field day within our unit and the different sides of the unit, the west side and the east side compete in like just fun little field day activities. And I wore my Shrek Crocs to the event <laughs> and I won, I won red light, green light because I was so speedy in my little Shrek Crocs. You were wearing yeah. them uh, sports mode, I assume. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah, four wheel drive. I love it. That I need giant to see nose those. at the front is very aerodynamic. Apparently. I was really shocked. Like I was, I don't mean to brag, but I was like way ahead of everybody. Hell yeah. I think they gave me, I think they blessed me with superhuman speed. To, like ogre like speed. speed. I love that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you see how speed. fast he runs through the castle when he's like rescuing mm-hmm. Fiona? With the donkey yeah. under his arm. Absolutely. Don't get it. Yeah, so strong. It's a lot how of momentum in that run. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't tell me that, Stacey. That's awesome. I need to see those in person. I haven't seen them IRL oh, yet. They're so cool. They're so cool. Well, they're they feel cool because you're wearing them. That's all I gotta say about <laughs> that. Cody, you agree? You know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us, Cody. You're the yes, best. Thank I've been you. telling you that for 20 years, but I mean every word, every time. And we love you, <laughs> you so much. You guys are the best. Thank you. Yeah, the best. John. All right, we're we'll all catch you next time. We will. Thanks, Bye. guys. Love you. Bye. See Cody's you later. Up.